In this tutorial, uh, let's focus on the cross-sections or implants sub-module of the 3D imaging module of Plan Macromexis software. So uh, I'm starting here in the Explorer sub-module. Uh, this is the module where uh, the volume gets opened by default uh, when we open it from the volumes list or capture or import it. And uh, let's start by navigating to cross-sections or uh, implant sub-module. So if I make a click here on top of this uh, Explorer text, I can see uh, the list of all the uh, 3D sub-modules uh, available in this license. So I'll uh, select here uh, this implants. So this might be called uh, cross-sections also if we wouldn't have um, the implant planning tools uh, included in our license. So these implant planning tools uh, will be covered uh, in a separate uh, tutorial. So if we don't have them, uh, then uh, this module is called uh, cross-sections. Uh, let's first uh, take a look at what kind of views uh, we see here in this sub-module. Uh, so we have a panoramic view, uh, we have axial view, and by the way, uh, we could also generate uh, the panoramic view here. So we have this panoramic uh, tools available. So we could, for example, uh, draw here. Uh, on the axial view, uh, the plane uh, according to which uh, we would like to generate our uh, panoramic view here. And then uh, what's uh, special in this submodule are these uh, cross-sectional uh, slices here. And then naturally we have the 3D rendering also. And uh, I can uh, adjust the layout a little bit. So uh, I could uh, hide, for example, the 3D rendered view uh, simply with this button here, show hide uh, renderer. So I could get more uh, space for my cross-section and uh, I can make it back. And then another option is also uh, to use these uh, small arrows here uh, in the corner of the view. So if I uh, click here, I can uh, change uh, the relative size uh, of these two, uh, two views. I can hide uh, the other view completely. And then uh, for uh, smaller adjustments, I can also use this small icons here in between the views so I can change uh, uh, the relative sizes uh, of the views. Let's then uh, take a closer look at these uh, cross-sectional uh, slices here. So firstly when I move my mouse uh, on top of these views I can see with this uh, color highlight uh, from where uh, this specific slice uh, is taken from uh, on the dental art. I can see uh, the highlight also here on the panoramic view. And uh, I can uh, move uh, the cross-sectional uh, uh, slices here in the dental arch by, by using this slider here. So this way I can examine through uh, the whole uh, dental arch, for example. And uh, the normal uh, slice adjustments apply also here uh, for these cross-sectional views. So I could open this viewport settings here uh, next to the view and uh, I could hover my mouse on top of this grid in order to determine how many cross-sectional slices I want to view simultaneously. So I could, for example, select uh, 10 uh, slices and I could make a click there and I could uh, change the number of the slices. Furthermore, here uh, in a familiar way, uh, as in other uh, views also, uh, we can adjust uh, uh, the distance uh, between the adjacent uh, uh, slices I can change uh, the width of the cross-sectional slices. So here we saw that this uh, red line here got uh, longer and we have a wider slice uh, on, on these uh, cross-sectional slices here. And then naturally we can change uh, the slice thickness of each uh, individual slice uh, using this third slider here. And uh, I can use uh, uh, when I have this toggle zoom activated, I can use my mouse wheel in order to zoom in and out uh, these views. So always uh, the part where my uh, cursor is uh, on the slice, uh, that will be uh, in the center of my zooming, so it will zoom according to that. And if I would like to zoom uh, all of these uh, uh, slices simultaneously, I can give control down on keyboard and I can use my mouse wheel and this way I can uh, increase uh, uh, the zooming for all of the slices uh, simultaneously. Let's then uh, take a look at a couple of uh, other 
um, viewing modes for these cross-sectional sizes. So here uh, we have a couple of controls that we don't have uh, usually for, for the other uh, slice views. So this first one, this is a full arch mode and this uh, generates us uh, cross-sectional slices at specific intervals uh, throughout the whole uh, dental arch. So this way uh, we could examine uh, the whole dental arch always have uh, uh, the, the slices at specific intervals uh, related to each other. So I could, for example, uh, make my measurements here uh, on the slices and I could examine uh, through the whole uh, dental arch. Then uh, I could mirror the slices just like in the other views and then there's also this other mirroring uh, option available these mirrors cross sections according to this uh, uh, apical point here uh, on the dental arch. So if I move my cross sectional stack a little bit, I see that the slices on, on the other side uh, are mirrored in a different way uh, according to, uh, to the apical point. So the mirroring changes uh, when the cross sections pass uh, this point here. And uh, what we have uh, still here, this is the implant-centric view. So if we would have an implant or a segmented uh, tooth in the plan and we would activate that um, uh, object uh, in the plan uh, by, by clicking on that, uh, we could uh, then click on this implant-centric view that would produce us uh, two uh, slice views here that are centered uh, on the implant or on the segmented uh, tooth. So instead of these cross-sectional slices, uh, we would see those two uh, centered views instead. And let's uh, still take a look at uh, default settings at this point. So this uh, big uh, wrench-like icon here on the toolbar. So if we open this, uh, firstly, in a familiar way, we could hide uh, different uh, overlays uh, on these views. So for example, I could hide uh, this secondary uh, cross-sectional slices uh, on the view and then for example I could also change uh, the numbering uh, for these cross-sectional uh, slices. So now they have ordinal numbering but if I would uh, click here they would get a panorama preference the numbering instead. Let's then uh, mark uh, a nerve. So um, here in this uh, sub-module uh, we have the nerve marking tool and then actually also a tool for drawing uh, the root canal nerve. Let's take a look at uh, that also a little bit later. So uh, here uh, we could use uh, these uh, tools uh, on any of these uh, slice views. So for example if I would uh, adjust uh, my panoramic uh, view so that I would uh, well see uh, the nerve canal here. I could uh, use the nerve drawing tool also here. But let's uh, take a look at how we can mark that uh, here in the cross sections. So uh, I could firstly browse uh, these cross sections uh, so that I find uh, the point where uh, the nerve canal starts. And then I could activate my uh, nerve drawing tool and I could click here uh, where the nerve starts and then uh, one click here inside also. And now uh, I don't need to mark uh, the nerve on uh, on all of these slices. So uh, every here and there I can click click in the middle of the nerve canal and uh, the software will naturally uh, draw the nerve uh, in between those uh, points. So no need to uh, click on every single slice here. And once uh, when I'm ready I can uh, right click uh, so that the nerve uh, gets uh, deactivated. If I would like to then activate it later I can uh, click on that uh, in the offset browser or here in the slice views and I can uh, adjust it by tracking uh, on the points. And here in the 3D rendered view I can still uh, check how the nerve looks like. So if I maximize this uh, view and then uh, if I use my uh, right mouse button, um, I can uh, I keep that down and I move my uh, mouse uh, from the bottom towards uh, top. I can check how the nerve looks like in the nerve canal. Here, for example, I might want to uh, increase uh, the diameter a little bit. 
then uh, I can uh, open this uh, small, um, like these properties, this small uh, wrench like icon here in the object browser. And I can, by the way, I can also uh, give my uh, nerve a name. So if I mark uh, several nerves, I can better recognize them from each other. I could change the color and then here I could change uh, the diameter uh, for the nerve. And then I could close the cropping uh, by keeping my right mouse button down and by moving my mouse uh, from the bottom, uh, no, from the top towards uh, the bottom uh, of the screen. And now I see that my nerve uh, also got a name. And then secondly, uh, like I said, we can also mark uh, these root canal nerves. So also these uh, we can mark uh, on any of these uh, slice views. So we could use the axial view or cross-sectional uh, or this panoramic view. And uh, so uh, this uh, works much in a similar way as this uh, a normal uh, nerve drawing tool also, but there's one difference. So uh, if we activate this uh, tool and then uh, we just uh, start clicking uh, points and naturally we could also browse uh, through the slice stack, stack. So if for example the nerve uh, would get curved a little bit, uh, we could uh, browse the stack and we could continue marking. And then uh, also this one we can finish with right mouse button. So the difference uh, between uh, these two uh, nerve drawing tools are that uh, for this uh, root canal nerve, uh, we also get automatically uh, the length uh, of the root canal nerve. Uh, so the diameter is always uh, default, uh, but we can get uh, the length uh, of the root canal that we just marked. And also here we can open the properties and we could uh, give different names or we could adjust uh, uh, the diameter.